Hey, what up guys? So today we're going to be talking about surge tanks. This topic came up here uh, recently and just want to kind of go over a few do's and don'ts, what to look for, what they do, how they work, and ultimately why you need one. All right, so now that I've got the cover off of mine here, let's kind of walk you through this. So what first off is a surge tank? Well, a surge tank really keeps the fuel from surging. The problem that I had with my system here, the standard fuel hat obviously sits on the right side of the tank here. You'd get down to Oh boy, really four or five gallons worth of fuel left in the tank. You'd take a hard right hander, all of the fuel would slosh to the other side of the car. Then of course, the system would go dry. The car would literally go dead silent in a corner. You're pedaling it, just complete dead pedal. As soon as you come out of the corner, all of a sudden the throttle would kick back in because now it had a fuel supply again. So how do you really alleviate this? Well, you build yourself a surge tank. You can even buy these things nowadays. Um, I've had this one, oh boy, probably 10 plus years or so. It is made out of 304L stainless uh, because primarily we do run E85 in this car just to be on the safe side. Wanted to use a, uh, you know, commercial grade fuel and food grade, even 304L stainless that, of course, we ticked all of this guy up. Now, the way that mine is set up is inside the tank down here, I have a standard uh, wall roll, you know, just a regular fuel pump, if you will. Uh, just your standard wall roll, I believe it's a 255, if I'm not mistaken, pushes fuel up. It actually goes up through here, goes through my flex fuel sensor, because on the Haltech, we actually do read that. It then comes into the tank itself here off to the right, but you're going to notice the way that this guy feeds. The reason why we feed it this way is this creates what's called a swirl pot. So as the fuel enters in here off to the right side, it will sit here and swirl around in a circle that will de-aerate the fuel. It basically removes all of the air from the fuel if you have bubbles or anything like that, rather than just splashing in from the top. It honestly just provides a quite a bit better of a solution because it is actually a swirl pot. It is removing the air from, uh, from the fuel. Now, on the bottom of this tank, you actually can't see it. It's really hard. It's actually directly underneath here, but coming out of the bottom of it is a Weldon Dash 10 fitting. That Weldon Dash 10 fitting comes directly out of the tank, goes straight, and I don't know if you can see that other access panel right there, but that's actually where the A1000 Pro and the fuel filter sits. Both of these systems, the way that we designed this is to keep it outside of the cockpit. You may have seen that box at the beginning of the video. That's an aluminum box that's tigged up to where when we close this guy down, button it up real tight, and we even take some high temp tape and go around the bottom of it just to make sure that no fumes or anything else could potentially escape. The thing to think about inside of these is not only the impact. Anytime you have any hard hit to the car, you don't want to have the surge tank to where it can move. This guy is literally bolted on a, a six by six plate. There's another one directly below it, and it's actually sandwiched into the body there. Nice tight fitting, you know, that way you don't have to worry about anything. The other side to this too is, is you don't really want to use, if at all possible, the body as a breach area. And what I mean by that is you don't want hard fittings attached to the body because think about what happens if you get in a crash. If you get into a crash, something's going to hit it. It's going to potentially bend that body or even flex that hose. The way that we designed this guy, or at least tried to, is if, if something gets hit, and let's say, for instance, this entire piece here were to deflect out of the way, well, everything is still on just these soft lines. So that way, you know, if it does, hopefully, you know, less chance of a leak, so on and so forth. Having your typical bulkhead fittings go directly through through something can potentially cause a problem and I'm a bit of a safety nut so that's why I actually decided to go with this route instead of having bulkhead fittings but again so coming out of the fuel tank Walboro comes up feeds into the swirl pot swirl pot then of course fills this guy up goes out directly through the A1000 that's what actually creates the pressure side once it goes through the fuel rails the return comes back and this is actually the return that's right here any fuel that isn't used by the engine gets returned to this tank first once this tank is filled, the overflow then comes off of this and goes down into the old return line that was on the tank. Ultimately, trying to keep this guy filled up at you know, at all times, if at all possible. And way back when we'd even done some calculations on this, what would it take with, you know, roughly a 600 horsepower car? If I were wide open throttle, how much fuel am I using? How much time am I on, let's say, a long straightaway? And ultimately designed it with about... Oh, I don't remember. I think it was 15 or 20 percent worth of uh, just a little bit of headroom in there. So we make sure that we never have it. But this solved our issues. This absolutely solved every single issue that we had with fuel surging. We never have to worry about it ever again. And ultimately, this is a, a great little modification. So take a look, man. If you guys ever want to build something like this, you certainly can build them yourself. Uh, you definitely want to take it together. So, of course, it's going to be fuel tight and whatnot. But, uh, you know, just keep in mind. 
if at all possible, try to keep it isolated from the inside. That way you don't have to have a, a massive firewall or something. You know, I get a little bit nervous anytime I see a fuel system inside of a vehicle just because, well, it's fuel inside the vehicle. You know, the better solution is always try to keep it on the outside of the car, even with the fire suppression system. But thought I'd give you guys just a quick rundown on this. Thought you'd get a kick out of it, at least see it, kind of learn a little bit about it. But there you go, guys. Thanks for watching.